You know how they always say that the Jesuit oath was just a forgery, right? Well, we found something. Stay tuned. I asked ChatGPT if the Jesuit oath is genuine, and it said that the notion of a secret and sinister Jesuit oath has been perpetuated by various sources over the centuries, often with anti-Catholic or anti-Jesuit agendas. The actual Jesuit vows include promises of poverty, chastity, or obedience, and a special vow of obedience to the Pope. Historically fabricated or exaggerated versions of Jesuit oaths have been used to promote sensational or conspiratorial narratives. Rome wants people to think that it's nothing more than a conspiracy, when it suits her, of course. There are even those who claim it was forged by this guy, Robert Ware, in his foxes and firebrands or a specimen of the danger and harmony of popery and separation. Folks, if you've never read the Jesuit oath, you need to go to the Library of Congress and look it up for yourself. It's quite a scary oath. But I'll just show you what actually existed within Robert Ware's book. This was the oath of secrecy devised by the Roman clergy as it remaineth on record at Paris. The actual oath of secrecy right here reads, I now in the presence of Almighty God, the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Blessed Michael, the Archangel, the Blessed St. John the Baptist, the Holy Apostle, St. Peter and St. Paul, and the saints of sacred past of heaven, and to you, my ghostly father, and to declare from my heart without mental reservation, that the Holiness Pope Urban is Christ's Vicar General and is the true and only head of the Catholic and Universal Church throughout the earth, and that the virtue of the keys of binding and loosing given to His Holiness in my Savior Jesus Christ, He hath power to depose heretical kings, princes, states, commonwealths, and governments, all being illegal without His sacred confirmation, and that they may safely be destroyed. Therefore, to the utmost of my power, I hail and will defend this doctrine and his holiness rights and customs against all usurpers of the heretical or protestant authority whatever especially against the now pretended authority and church of england and all the adherents in regard that they the uh, her heretical opposing the sacred mother church of rome i do renounce and disown any allegiance as due to any heretical prince or state named protestants or disobedience to any of their inferior magistrates or officers. I do further declare that the doctrine of the Church of England, of the Calvinists, Huguenots, and other of the name Protestants to be damnable, and that they themselves are damned, and to the damned, that will not forsake the same. I do further declare that I will help, assist, and abide, advise all of His Holiness agents in any way Wherever I shall be in England, Scotland, and Ireland, or in any other territory or kingdom, I shall come to and do my utmost to extirpate the heretical Protestants' doctrine, and to destroy all their pretended powers, regal or otherwise. I do further promise and declare that notwithstanding I am opposed with to assume any religious heretical for the propagation of the Mother Church interest to keep secret and to um, pro punish or probate to all her ed agents' counsels from time to time as they entrust me, and not to divulge directly or indirectly by word, writing, circumference, or whatever, but to execute all that shall be proposed, given in charge, or discovered unto me, by you, my ghostly father, or by any of the sacred convent, all of which I do swear by the blessed Trinity and blessed sacrament, which I am now to receive to perform on my part to keep profitably, and to call upon the heavenly and glorious host of heaven to witness these my real intentions to keep my oath in testimony thereof i take this most holy blessed sacrament of the eucharist and witness the same further with my hand and seal in the face of this holy convent this day of anno domini etc in case you haven't realized this varied a little bit from the jesuit oath that's listed in the library of congress and so those who say well it came directly from foxes and firebrands well they're basically counting on your ignorance that you've never read foxes and firebrands 
but they are also counting on your ignorance that you've never read Rome's actual works. Was this completely a fabrication from Robert Ware? I don't think so. How many of you guys have ever read the Pontificale Romanum? The Pontificale Romanum. Well, here we go. Here's the Pontificale Romanum, where there's a sworn statement, I swear that heretics and schismatics and rebels to our Lord, the Lord Pope, or his successors, I will to the extent of my power persecute and beat down. Propose persecuar and impugnabo. There's the statement right there. Okay, so now that we've proven that there was an actual abbot's oath, um, hold on. Let's take a look and see something real. Folks, I actually have it right here. This is the Pontificale Romanum, which contains the abbot's oath. You see, for all the talk about how false the extreme Jesuit oath is and how it's inconsistent with with uh, Catholic doctrine, etc. The fact is, is that the Jesuit extreme oath really just continued what Rome had been doing across the board. And what do I mean by that? This is a real Pontificale Romanum right here. As you can see, it's a little book. It's got gold around it. It was something that you could slip into your robe and carry around with you. A sort of instruction book, if you will. This is a very real copy right here. This particular copy is from the year 1682, right here. 1682. This one was put out under the direction of Clement VIII, Pope Clement VIII. Let's take a look at page 62. So if we go to page 62, and this, this is the first uh, part of actually a three-part section. Here on page 62... I can find hereticos, schismaticos, and rebelles item domino nostro, vel successoribus predictis proposi persuquar and impugnabo. Let's see if we can get a close up of that right there. Proposi persuquar and impugnabo. There it is. Right there. You're reading something in the original Pontificale Romanum, Gilt Edges that they would carry around, sworn to persecute and beat down heretics. But lest we should question whether or not Rome actually sought to extirpate. Extirpate, wasn't that the word that Robert Ware had in the oath that he mentioned, right? I mean, it sounds a little bit more violent to me. It sounds more consistent with the harlot of Revelation 17 to me. Well, can we, can we actually find that in Rome's writings as well? Folks, I have another work here to show you. This, and this is going to take up the entire screen because it's so massive. This right here, I'm going to have to back up, is one massive work by a Jesuit, Philippe Lava. This particular work comes from the year 1731. That is a Sacro Sancta Concilia. And this particular Sacro Sancta Concilia, or the Sacred Councils, has recordings from the year 1243 down to around the year ooh, 13, 1302. But within that time frame, it has a work by Pope Innocent IV, a very famous work, I might add, a bull that he put out, or a constitution against heretics, if you will. Famous one, you can look it up on Wikipedia yourself, but it's called Ad Exterpanda. Let's take a look here. See if you can see this, and we'll put it up to the screen. This is Ad Exterpanda. There is Ad Exterpanda right there. You can see the big A and Ad Exterpanda. But one of the things that I find important about Ad Exterpanda is chapter 25, or, yeah, verse 25 right here. We'll see if we can load this up to the screen so you can see for yourself. What I find important about that is it says, Teniator Preteria Potestas, Seu Rector, Omnis Hereticos Quos Captos, 
habuerit cogiri citra membri diminutionem and mortis periculum. What it was is it was one of the first inquisition bulls, if you will, that authorized the proper use of torture for its victims. Torture was allowed so long as you didn't separate a body part from the body or if you did not act outright kill the person. Uh, that was the allowed uh, authorized use of torture in this particular context. You see the bloody harlot of Revelation 17 in her councils, in her bulls, and in her works most certainly did enact crimes against humanity. So when people doubt and throw shade on the veracity of the Jesuit oath, I just ask, have you read the works that are out there? Is it really inconsistent with what Rome has called for publicly for centuries? My appeal to you today is if you are within this system or you're connected with Catholicism in any way, come out of her. Revelation tells God's people, come out of her, my people. We do not carry hatred for the people in this system. We do not um, despise them. But we do oppose the principles of this system because they are opposed to God and his character who invites you freely to choose truth and does not require the use of coercion to do so.